there's a scene in Shakespeare's famous play where it's just about to become daylight, and Romeo says, I have more care to stay than will to go. For these hummingbirds, it's something like that. Even with me standing only a foot of way with my camera, they don't want to leave. In this video, I want to show you how to make the easiest, most cost-efficient hummingbird feeder that I have ever found. And I'm sure if you give it a try, you'll love it. The local hummingbirds will love it even more than you do. In fact, they'll be defending it rain or shine. So you may want to make multiples, but they're very easy to construct and they require almost no tools. I'll go over the process entirely. Let's get started. At its most basic level, this is just a bottle and some wire. So let's talk about those two things first. A soy sauce bottle like this one can be found at just about any supermarket for about a dollar and a half. These bottles will withstand being frozen. They will withstand having boiling water put in them. And even the little red cap, which functions as the feeder itself, is extremely durable. A few of ours are several years old now, and they haven't even faded. After you've finished off your sauce, you'll find a little white foamy gasket in here. You may remove it. It is not necessary. Why does it not leak when it's turned upside down? Well, it's because the air that's inside of it that's trapped has a lower pressure than the atmosphere. And so it kind of sucks it up. Now, as the feeder heats up over the course of the day, sunlight will cause the temperature in the bottle to heat up this air and it will expand and it will drip. So place your feeder accordingly. Let's look at a few different types of wire. One really easy option is this 12 gauge copper electrical wiring. What are some benefits of using copper wiring? It's easy to find, it's easy to bend because it's soft, and it won't rust. This is my recommendation though. It's a steel clothesline, and it has some sort of vinyl jacket on the outside. It just works the best. Plus it looks green, which is rather organic looking. This product is pretty easy to find, and it's about the same thickness as copper wire, but it's much stronger. A similar option is coat hanger. It will also work just fine. And one last wire to mention. This is a galvanized wire. It's slightly thicker than the other two, and it's a lot harder to bend. I'm not recommending this for the feeder, but we'll return to this later for a pretty cool trick. Almost no tools, but a pair of needle nose will be nice because they have cutters on the inside and we can use the outside part to shape the wire. We need a piece that's 28 inches long. Whenever you're working with wire, you should keep in mind just how dangerous the ends of wire can be. At the first opportunity, I try to put a P-shaped bend into the end just to make it safer. This is easy enough. We just grab right around here, about this far away from the end, and we just roll it back on itself. On one end, one of these will be the end of the perch, and on the other end, it will be where it hangs. Now for the rest of this process, nothing has to be exact. Just put it behind the bottle about three or four inches and we're just going to wrap it around. There's one. Now we'll make the second a little bit bigger. There's two. And now we'll make the third really big and kind of shoot off into space. As I've said, no rules. We can make it however we want, however you think it looks nice. Before I finish it, take a moment to consider this perch. It's not just a perch. It's also a lever that opens the spring up a little bit and allows the bottle to slip out. It just makes the whole process a lot easier. Now we'll just grab this with the tip of our pliers and 
curl it around like this. Finally, let's hang it on something to straighten it out. The feeder doesn't have to be perfectly level to function well, but try to get it close. If ants become a problem at your feeder, you'll want to do something like this. This is just the lid to a spice container and it's a piece of wire that moves through it and there's a little glob of hot glue there. That's all it takes to make a little container of water. And believe it or not, ants will not cross this. This type of feeder will work great, I promise you. But there is an upgrade. If you're changing them out constantly, something like this might be easier. In midsummer, when it's busiest for hummingbirds, we're going through about two bottles like this every day. We're keeping about three operational feeders at a time, and so taking them in and out of this is much faster and easier. You just cap it with your fingers to turn it upside down, and slip it in, and level it really quickly, and you're good until it runs out. This one is 100% copper, which means that it won't rust, and it's antibacterial, and I even have a video about how to make copper chain. If we want to make this, it's not too complicated if we look at it as a bunch of simpler parts. We have a hook that spirals in two directions. That's easy enough. It connects to a single link. That connects to a larger link, which connects to three chains. But the tough part is down here. And to do this, we'll break it into three parts. The parts are made by cutting a 12 inch piece of wire and then twisting a loop into the middle of it. Whenever you're twisting two pieces of wire together, you want to aim for 120 degrees. Think about this. This is because a circle is 360 degrees and 120 degrees is just a circle divided into three even parts. The first two parts that we twist together are not going to stay twisted together, unfortunately. That's because we're getting ready to connect them all together later on. You'll understand in a moment. Just get it so that it looks nice and then take them back apart. Then you're free to connect the remaining pieces. Take your time. It's tough, but you'll get it. Just keep in mind that 120 degree thing. It will give you a better looking twist. Now we attach the two remaining straight ones to each other, and then finally the two curly ones will close it all together. If you're having trouble twisting the wire together, one option you might want to consider is annealing the copper by using a blowtorch to heat it up. It will make it a lot softer and easier to work, but it will be a little bit of extra work and some extra cleanup. Almost there. Keep in mind that until all three parts are attached to one another, you can still screw one of the sides in or out to adjust it for length. Just be patient and you'll get it. It's a pretty big target. Not bad. Now we just add 25 lengths of chain to each of these rings and we'll bend it up just a little bit. Oh, and yes, these are perches. Hummingbirds are extremely tiny. Over the years, I've tried lots of different tools for bending copper, and these work the best. These came from a dollar store. The cheaper, the better. And the reason for that is, look close. Cheap pliers are made with softer metal, so you can easily drill a hole in the end of them, which is really great for copper work. Once all of the copper has been put together, 
you might prefer to have a patina that's uniform, or maybe you just like shiny. If that's the case, you can just use some salt and vinegar. It only takes a couple seconds and it works like a charm. Okay, there's one last wire creation I want to share with you before we end this video. It's a semicircle made from that thick wire I showed you earlier in the video. It's over two feet wide, which is for a window of that size. And it sticks out about 10 inches and these parts up about eight inches. This is pretty easy to make and it can be really fun. It goes inside the channel that's intended for the upper window. The way that it's bent causes it to press against the sides gently, just enough to support the weight of, you guessed it, our hummingbird feeders. It's important to keep these feeders clean, but thankfully this is also easy to do. With a little red cap, all you have to do is really rinse it out and give it a pipe cleaner through it back and forth a few times. With the glass, it's a little bit of a different story. Usually you can just rinse it out, but every once in a while black spots will show up. You are always looking to eliminate the black spots. If you get them, a few sheets of toilet paper and a chopstick will do the trick. At most, add a drop of soap, and this will break down into pulp, and the slurry will just dump out. Last but not least is the recipe. We mix ours at a four to one ratio, and that's after boiling. That means one quarter cup to every cup. It isn't really necessary to boil the water for very long. Typically, I just let it come to a rolling boil, hold for a few seconds, and then stop. The goal is to kill bacteria, and that doesn't take very long. The longer the water boils, the more of the water evaporates away. Try not to put them in the fridge right away, just to avoid thermal shock, which could, in theory, crack the glass. Though I don't usually follow this advice myself. Well, that's all for now. If you found this interesting, please let me know it. And if you make this project, I would especially love to hear from you. I appreciate your continued interest. Pocket 83, signing off.